Your voice, your opinion, your community. Fact TV, free speech, protected. Okay, thank you everyone for being here. This is a remarkable turnout. Uh, I'm Rick Cowan and I'm the select board liaison to the Walk Bike Committee. The Walk Bike Committee is a creation of the, of the select board and advisory group. And um, I wanted to um, sort of let you know what our, what our, uh, who the people are who are on this committee. So let's start off with some introductions and also our presenters tonight. Um, so we have Marcia Stern. Here, and she's our chair. We have Bonnie Anderson. Oh, yeah. So, so. <laughs> yes. Uh, we have Gary Fox back there from uh, Town of Rockingham, uh, the development uh, director. We have Connor Floyd from the Wyndham County Trails Association. Hey, Connor. And the Trails Alliance. And we have Mike Kowalsik from the Manana Regional Rail Collaborative, Rail Trail Collaborative, our representative from across the river. We have Stan Tolstra, who is there. He's a member of the committee, lives in Saxton's River. And we have Bonnie North, my colleague on the select board, who is also um, a key player at the Historical Society. And online, we may have Jonathan Weber, who's down there. And he's in Burlington. He's our uh, advi a volunteer advisor from a group called Local Motion in Burlington. They advise walk bike um, at projects all around the state. So, so the, the goals for tonight is for people like, oh, sorry, Peter Bergstrom. <laughs> Peter Bergstrom is a member of the committee and uh, also a Saxon River resident. Have you seen anyone else? Okay. So, um, first goal for tonight is for people who care about uh, hiking and biking and cycling to get to know each other and thus uh, be able to collaborate. The second goal is to educate ourselves about walk, bike opportunities and challenges so that we can um, come up with some proposed solutions and, and projects. Okay. So, let me describe what the plan is. Um, each presenter, we have five presenters, each of whom will speak for six minutes. And that'll be amazing if we stick to that. But um, we're going to ask you to hold questions until the second part of the program. And at that point, you can ask any questions. Bonnie will be, um, will be moderating the second part of the questions, the, uh, the question and answer session. So first, I'm going to start off with our first presenter, who is Bonnie, and she is the embodiment of cycling in, in this town. Thank you so much for coming to Canada. I'm, I'm so happy with this. Okay, I got to talk louder. My brother's telling me. <laughs> um, and I apologize. I'm getting over a cold. I'm not contagious. I'm not sick, but I, my voice is a little rough. So bear with me. Um, thank you. This is awesome. And, and um, so I'm going to be talking about um, the develop you know, building bike and walk culture in, in the town and I just want to start off by saying this is this is huge like this is you are all helping to build just by being here just by showing up so um, that's great and um, I in my opinion I think that um, that building bike culture starts with youth and so it's there's been such a growth ever since we've um, had the, the bike project. We're in our tenth year, and so um, we've seen like this definitely a growth of um, biking around town. A lot of youth. There's Haley and Juan from Friends for Change here, who you know we we work with them a lot to um, the local youth group. To work with them a lot, getting them on bikes, and so uh, really getting kids biking more and more, getting them starting early, and making sure they have bikes, and, and just you know get and, and you know then the infrastructure, um, making it safe for them is key, and getting families um, biking. So 
uh, there's uh, well the, the current things that are that are uh, going on um, is uh, so uh, I wanted to talk about uh, the uh, shoot the Central School. I keep wanting to call it WCS. That's Westminster. So the Central School. I don't know if any of you have seen them riding around, but uh, Peter Stolle, the gym teacher, takes the kids out. He has a whole bike week, and then beyond that, and they they ride around and teach them how to navigate the streets and safely. And you get like ones like this big and and up. And so that's really that's where it starts: getting them riding um, and, and getting them riding safely, learning how to you know, all that. So that's going on. The pump track, which, you know, Lakota, Connor will, Connor will be talking about, um, that's been great. We have kids coming by and I always ask them, do you use the pump track? Yeah, we do. And they, you know, they come by to, to uh, tinker on their bikes and uh, just get some air and we get the feedback. They're riding so much more. Um, and uh, so the pump track and then the trails up there, it's so great. Um, and um, so we have youth drop in. Uh, yeah, they can drop in any time and just and work on their bikes. Um, and um, and then so, sorry. Um, oh, so I'm, so some possibilities of is anyone time keeping time? Someone should time because I'm going to just ramble. I think that's my job. Um, <laughs> some things that I've heard about that I haven't seen happen in this town, but I know um, Peter Laurie talked about years ago, is um, a bicycle bus and a walking bus. And if any, and if any of you don't know what that is, it's where um, adults take kids, walk them to school, either walk them to school or ride them to school. So it's kind of like a, it's like a bus, but you're, they're all riding their bikes or they're all walking. And I just I would love to see that happen in this town, <clears throat> and um, I just want to put that out there because uh, I think that'd be great. Just getting families involved more and um, and things. So um, let's see. Uh, well, we at the bike shop see the whole gamut of of riders and walkers, but um, we're obviously dealing with, with uh, riders. So. Um, everything from people who have no transportation, they need a bike for transportation, all the way up to the people with their, um, you know, blingy bikes and, and high-end bikes, and, um, and everything in between. And, and we all need, we all share the same infrastructure, and we need to uh, make sure that it's safe and accessible, and so um, that's huge. And, um, you know, we just have to think about everybody. Um, uh, so one thing I want to touch on briefly is the possibility, and this kind of you know ties in with everything else that's going to be talked about tonight, is um, just to put a bug in, in everyone's ear about the possibility of having uh, access, uh, right away access to the rail. We have this great, fantastic riverfront, and we can't use most of it. The riverfront trail. The, on the south part was great, um, which will be talked about. But um, uh, we can, you know, we have this whole northern end, which is taken up by the railroad. So uh, there's there's a conversation for that, and, and you know, maybe not tonight. But I just want people to think about the possibility of that. Um, and um, I think I've probably used up my time already. But uh, I just wanted to say that I'm really excited over the course of time that, again, that we've had the bike shop, um, we've seen all these little groups popping up, you know, the, the uh, Saxon River Valley Trails and, um, and then uh, the Monadnock Trail, you know, all the, and then Wakoda, and they're all starting to merge now, and it's so exciting. It's just, it's, you know, and this, oh my gosh, this is so great that we all know. And I think I'm done. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so our next presenter is Gary Fox. Um, yeah, I don't, no, 
Hi, I'm Bonnie North. Um, I uh, handle all the finances for the Bellas Falls Historical Society, and I've been doing that now for about six years, I guess. Uh, I hope everybody here knows of and has visited the Riverfront Park. Is that right? Raise your hand. All right, that's good. <laughs> I still run into people that don't even know it's there, and that is heartbreaking. Um, so it's really, it, it's an absolutely splendid little park, and we're so proud of it. Um, but one thing I doubt many people know is how it came to be. Uh, it started uh, as a dream uh, conjured up by Stuart Reed, who was the treasurer and benefactor of the society for a long, long time. And he persisted in getting a multitude of grants, building what they call a funding stack. Uh, several hundred thousand dollars went into brownfield cleanup and excavation and so forth down there. I don't know if many people ever went down that way before the park, but I used to go with my dog sometimes, and it was just a big mess of brambles. And now it's this beautiful park. Um, one thing that needs to be said tonight is that from the onset, as this dream was built, it was planned to be the gateway to a larger trail system. It's written right in the EPA grants and all the old documents that <clears throat> came to me when I took over things for the Historical Society. So this was always always in the plan for that part. <clears throat> Excuse me, that's why we got the easement. So our land goes up to the sewage plant. And then beyond that, we have an easement to the mouth of the Saxons River. The Bellows Falls Historical Society owns that easement. And that was always intended to connect with the Saxons River Valley Trails Initiative. And so this is all part of a Great big scheme that's been floating around in the ethers for well over a decade. And the Historical Society is very proud and happy to see it coming closer and closer to fruition. That easement, if you've ever walked it, you couldn't really ride a bike on it because yeah, around the sewer system, it's very, very steep like that. So we're hoping funding can be gotten to do some excavating and level it off and gravel it. And there's even some wishful thinking that we could make the whole thing handicapped access in the end. So anyway, that's why I'm here tonight, just to give everybody a little background and encourage you to uh, enjoy the park. This is too close. Okay. Work it on the floor. Uh, I'm Peter Bergstrom. I am on the Walk Bike Committee. I'm also on the Town's Conservation Commission, and I'm the Energy Coordinator and, and Chair of the Energy Committee. So uh, my wife starts asking me, hey, you just keep adding stuff? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I've always been a big fan of um, hiking and biking trails. And is it possible to hide the participants so the, um, yeah. uh, no, no, that's, I think I'm the, that little, the little down arrow right there, maybe? Yeah, just stay close, yeah. There we go. Okay. I will I be able I might be able to see the notes when it's yeah. Uh they're across the top. Oh okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. And I'm I'm here okay. dancing around. <laughs> <laughs> um, so um, I'm gonna give you a whirlwind tour of trails that I know about in, in Rockingham. Won't be able to go into detail. There is a map of all of them over here, so I'd be happy to 
uh, talk to you about them afterwards, or I can email you information. So we do have some walking and biking trails. Obviously, they're not connected to each other, and they could be much better. So next slide. Uh, sometimes down arrow works, right arrow. Oh, I think it's because you're in Zoom and not PowerPoint. Yeah. Is that right? Sorry. No. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, this is just a list of the 11 trails I'm going to talk about. Um, too much detail. Next slide. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. okay. and this is a, uh, these are some detail maps. Um, they're mostly in the south part of town. Uh, so obviously we need more trails uh, around the town. And two, uh, the Bald Hill Trail is in Westminster. Next slide. So I'm going to talk first about more developed and maintained trails, and these are not all equally developed, but, but somebody has, has worked on them. So the first one is the, if you could advance it, uh, the Bellows Falls Riverfront Trail, which um, Bonnie just talked about. This is uh, the sort of the middle of that trail. Uh, the north part of that trail has been uh, covered with sure pack, that's what you see here, um, and it parallels Mill Street most of the way. There's a kayak ramp down to the river, uh, labyrinth is on the hill up in the back. So if, if you haven't walked it, I definitely recommend it. Uh, and the Miner's Pond Trail, which I think uh, Connor is going to talk about, it's just it's a loop trail around the pond, about two and a half miles. So it's a nice, um, nice distance for for walking. Uh, next one, uh, the Oak Hill Mountain Bike Trails, which Connor is also going to talk about. So I won't. Uh, um, go into them. Uh, the Vermont Academy trails are on the northwest side of campus and they're a mixture of old logging roads and uh, narrow single track trails used for mountain biking. Um, so those the narrow ones are not great for hiking but the, the old logging roads such as shown here are good for hiking. And there are uh, large maps at kiosks around the campus and what I'd recommend is if you want to hike these trails, take a picture with your phone of the map on the kiosk, and then you can go back to it. I've met, I've met people in the woods there who say, I don't want to get out of here. I'm totally lost. Because <laughs> all the trails loop back on each other and sort of go over the hill. And, um, so that, that's a, uh, a trick that I picked up. Uh, the distant hill trails have that. They say, take a picture of the map, and then you'll have it with you. Um, and this is not in Vermont, but it has a great view of Vermont. This is the Table Rock Trail in North Walpole. Uh, it starts at the end of Mountain View Road, which is here. Uh, it's just when you put your oh. hand in front of the <laughs> <laughs> I, I won't go over there. Uh, it starts at the end of Mountain View Road in, in North Walpole, and then it's an old carriage road uh, that goes fairly steeply up the hill. And the main thing you need to know uh, is that there's a right fork when you're getting near the summit. If you go straight, you'll get to the, uh, the ridge, which has the transmission towers. It doesn't have a view. But if you hang a right, uh, you'll get to Table Rock, which has a great view uh, of Bellows Falls. Um, so the next slide shows what that view looked like in 1855 and in 2003. It's really an amazing view. Uh, and I, I highly recommend going up there if you, if you haven't been up there. Uh, next slide. Uh, there are Bald Hill and High School trails in Westminster. Uh, some of them are on high school land. The uh, parcel in green is a, uh, belongs to the Windham Hill Pinnacle Association, and they call it the, the Bald Hill Reserve. Uh, and those are also uh, 
lovely trails uh, that I, I recommend checking out. Uh, and oh, that's okay. That's okay. Uh, Harris Cove is a natural area in the northwest corner of town. Uh, if you haven't been there, and it's a major birding area, um, so I highly recommend it for birds. Uh, there are trails on the west side of the peninsula. I believe that um, they built this up with Phil when they uh, flooded the, um, they, they raised the dam in Bells Falls for hydroelectric power. That flooded a lot of the marshes on the Connecticut River, but I, I think they built up this peninsula so it would be better as a park. You don't have to worry about um, your car getting stuck in the marsh. <laughs> so it's a nice, it's a nice area to visit. Uh, 236 species of birds, which that's a lot. <laughs> the Riverfront Park, we're up to about uh, 130 or something. Yeah, it takes a lot of work to get to 236 species. <laughs> All right, next slide. Uh, there are some less developed trails you might want to check out. Um, I think I've been, yeah, I've been on, on all these, not so much the village forest. So next slide, the Durand uh, State Forest was not um, not really created or maintained for hiking. Um, it was uh, in the bequest, it was mainly managed for hunting, fishing, and trapping. So the roads are just kind of a, a there. Um, it does have some marshes. It has uh, the headwaters of Wright Brook, which flows north into the Williams River. Uh, but this is managed by Tim Morton, who's a state forester, and he said they, they really it's okay to hike there, but you know it's not something they, they encourage necessarily. Um, next slide. Uh, this is a hike right near my house. I near, live near the, the Warner Center in Saxon River. Some of my neighbors are here. <laughs> uh, if you like hiking to views, there's an old uh, ski area that uh, still belongs to Vermont Academy. They don't use it. It's on Hartley Hill Road. Uh, and you can walk uh, up this ski slope uh, to a point about uh, the second overlook there. Um, with a nice view. So the next slide shows the views. Uh, there are two views. The lower picture is the first one you get to that looks out across the trailer park uh, on Westminster West Road. And the higher view, the, the one in the upper left, uh, looks out over the Warner Center and you can see part of Saxon's River. Um, so it's kind of a neat hike. It, it's, quite, it's quite steep. Uh, but Vermont Academy still mows it, so you don't have to bring a machete to, <laughs> to get through it. Um, and this is the southern portion of the Bellows Falls Riverfront Trail. Uh, it's not on Historical Society land, it's on the easements that the Historical Society holds. And you can see some of the challenges there. The trail is, is uh, sloped, uh, it uh, not, doesn't have a crushed stone surface. So we're, we're, Gary will be talking about a grant uh, that we hope will uh, get us towards building a, a crushed stone level trail along here so it'll be much more uh, accessible. Uh, and then finally, I really haven't explored this, but the village owns a forest to protect its water supply and uh, it's almost a thousand acres, I think. Uh, it's north and a little bit west of Miner's Pond and there is a, a logging road in there. I haven't explored it. But it's it's uh, I think it's a loop of almost four miles, and there's a potential to connect to uh, Paradise Hill Road and Hall Bridge Road uh, down in the lower left there, um, and you reach it from Darby Hill Road. I don't know how many of you've been up there, but uh, that's how you get to the to the Village Forest. It's the only underpass under I ninety one between Route one twenty one and one hundred three. Um, so it's kind of, it's a neat area. Uh, and uh, I'm not taking questions now, but these are just some ways you can help. You can help maintain local trails. You can help with uh, um, not weed control. I'm always looking for volunteers for that. Uh, and uh, 
some of the trails need to be explored, especially the village forest. Somebody with a, a GPS that records tracks could go out and, uh, and do some exploring. Thank you. Thank you. Gary Fox. How's it going? Um, so uh, Bonnie, was, uh, uh, Bonnie North was showing us the um, Bellows Falls Historic Riverfront Park. And, uh, and this is the first extension coming off at the Saxons River Valley Trail Initiative. Um, so if you want to go to the... So these are some of the challenges on the, on the trail. Um, uh, Peter was showing um, some of the um, uh, smoother areas around the wastewater treatment plant as you get further, um, it gets uh, pretty tough. There's also um, all of Bells Falls stormwater drains down into two pipes that go under the railroad and they come out in different sections that this trail goes across uh, and there's um, railroad uh, crossing. So the, there's, a, there's a whole bunch of challenges to having a good trail here and um, uh, uh, Swifty, um, the town had uh, done a couple of applications to try and get some trails built with trail builders and it's just a, it's a really uh, challenging site and um, so what we've done at this point is go to uh, uh, VTrans where they have uh, engineers that, that work on lots of challenging terrain around Vermont uh, with a scoping study which will um, for shared use paths. So if you want to go to the next um, slide. Um, the transportation alternatives grant, um, one of the things that will do for bicycles and pedestrians is what they call the shared use paths. And um, <clears throat> these are just some, uh, some graphics on their website of what uh, shared use paths look like. And the goal, uh, um, this path starts right in the uh, center of the Bells Falls village. Uh, 3,000 people, um, uh, walking village. A lot of people like to not uh, have to get in your cars. Um, so things why it's great to have a, a health center right here in the village. Everyone can walk there. So for trail use and recreation to be able to walk here, really important that our, our trails right in the village can work for anyone. So whether you're um, a family with a stroller or uh, you're on a wheelchair, can you, can you get out here and connect from the village of Bells Falls out to the um, past the Liberty Mill to the Saxon River Estuary. And uh, so next slide. <clears throat> um, so the, the first part of the trail, um, it is, uh, there is a road you can drive through up to the wastewater treatment plant. It does work for everything. And this great graphic on the Historical Society's website that, um, you know, a, a drawing, it shows all of the features where there's kayak launch, um, so, yeah, uh, anyway, we can move on to the next slide. We only have um, uh, four minutes. So, so the thing about shared use paths, right? Accessibility. You want them to. Um, it's uh, separate from car traffic. Uh, pedestrians has to meet guidelines for um, would walk with all of the um, standards that uh, I think they call it ASHTO or ASTO or something that um, are rules for um, for roadways. And so we can move along through a lot of these mobility devices, vision disabilities, it has to work for all of that sort of thing. And um, uh, next slide. And so um, uh, just some of the design of fencing, landscaping, roadway crossings, um, safe, attractive path between two communities. This was an example um, in an area. Uh, one of them uh, was 3,000 people about the size of Bellows Falls. And um, uh, so uh, bicyclists, pedestrians, skaters, wheelchairs, joggers, um, uh, and uh, yeah, we have bicyclists up there. So um, uh, single shared use path, um, uh, both directions, uh, bicycles and pedestrians, next slide. Um, so it, its role is to be a, um, a transportation and recreation corridor for residents and, and visitors. and um, as the historical society with their um, it didn't really get into the non trail stuff, but there's um, destination area with the um, Adams grist mill um, 1830 uh, 1830s um, uh, grist mill that's still in um, close to uh, working shape and um, 
So uh, having that as a destination and having a trail that works for everyone, really important. And so, um, can you go to the next slide? Excuse me. Um, here, I just got a, a message from somebody on Zoom. They can't see the slides. So I think oh. I will share the screen. Okay. So I guess you were right. You have to stop share and then reshare. Okay. So Sorry. To get out of no, that's good. Thank you. Um, um, I don't know how to get out of this now. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, that was um, my fault messing you up there. So I think this, uh, no, we have to go to share. Let's see. I think that'll do it. <clears throat> Can they see now? Uh, oh, I don't know. No, that's not. That's okay. not it. Ah, uh, okay. So, oh, that's going to share. Share yes, no, yeah. the power back and share the power back. So I'll try and explain things, sir. Um, uh, technologically challenged. I didn't get the PowerPoint so that it can show on Zoom. So uh, my fault there. Um, uh, so the benefits for the trails, most of what I'm talking about is, is not on the slides, like the riverfront area, Gristmill destination. Um, uh, basically, it's, it's just a lot of little words there. What are the, what are the, what are the benefits of, um, what are the benefits of a shared use path? So I'll read those out really fast for the um, minute and a half left. So uh, de dedicated facility for users of all ages and abilities provides a shortcut between neighborhoods provides uh, uh, access to areas otherwise um, only limited access roadways, supports tourism through convenient access to natural areas, enjoyable recreational opportunity itself, promotes, provides non-motorized transportation access to natural and recreational areas, especially helpful for uh, low income communities obtain for access to recreation um, without you know, driving a ways out of town. Paths have a small footprint and can display a distinctly rural character. Next slide. And so there's not really any pictures here for the, the folks on Zoom that we're, we're looking at. I am. Um, <clears throat> oh, okay. So that so that's all it. So um, uh, the, the way this grant works, um, uh, we work with Wyndham Regional Commission as um, project managers and um, identify consultants that are good with this kind of work. And as you can see from those pictures of the beginning, some of that, the uh, rough roadways up through Liberty Mill, um, it, it is challenging terrain and why we work with um, uh, uh, consultants that are experienced in um, this type of engineering. <clears throat> and, uh, and, it, and it's expensive in these grants. So, so the um, transportation alternatives grants provide uh, like $50,000 just the engineering work to um, uh, to look at design issues and um, and then they do have um, after scoping you're eligible to apply to fund building of it and they contribute up to three hundred thousand dollars towards the building of the trails um, so that's our goal to get there and why we're going with this shared use um, <clears throat> pathway method and um, uh, that's really that's the scoop um, and Thank you. the sidewalk thing another time. Okay. <laughs> if you want, if you want to talk about sidewalks in Saxons River and Bell's Falls at some point in a future gathering. And that's a really important topic because a lot of folks enjoy walking around Bell's Falls and Saxons River. But now we're going to hear about the trails up around um, Miner's Pond um, from Connor. Hey there, uh, my name is Connor Floyd. I'm one of the board members on the Wyndham County Trails Alliance. Um, and although we're called the Wyndham County Trails Alliance, we really only work in Bells Falls. We just kind of claim the entire county with our <laughs> um, And so we're, you know, we're a really small, um, all volunteer organization. We're 
um, a subchapter of the Vermont Mountain Bike Association. So they're kind of our umbrella organization that provides a lot of that more administrative support. Uh, but we're the on the ground folks that are working here in Bells Falls to develop trails. There's about five of us on the board right now. Um, we run some group rides over the summer. We both do um, beginner group rides at the high school trails uh, for folks that are just getting into mountain biking. Uh, and then we also do intermediate or advanced rides at the Oak Hill trails. Uh, most of the trail building work that we've done to this point is at the Oak Hill trails. And so those are the trails that are behind the rec center as you're going up the ski hill. Uh, I believe that there was a, or one hiking trail that the Vermont Youth Conservation Corps built um, years ago. And so we've kind of added on to that. We started down at the bottom and right now you can go all the way from the rec center up to uh, Griswold Drive. There's a little loop there. Uh, there's a scenic overlook trail as well as some more uh, mountain bike focused trails. Um, all of those trails up there, you know, they're uh, available and accessible to hikers and bikers. Uh, some trails are really more suited towards biking and that's really more just because the folks you know we're bikers we like to bike and so sometimes we get excited about building those kinds of trails but really the entire system is a mixed use system um the kind of what we're looking at for next year or in the next couple of years is connecting the oak hill trails with the miners pond loop and really the up until the state oak uh wakoda hasn't actually done any work on the miners pond trails i'm not sure who created those or if anyone maintains them or if they're just kind of community built there. Um, but that's an informal loop that goes around uh, Miners Pond. Really beautiful uh, little trail system up there. And our hope is to build like a two-ish mile connector trail that will take you uh, from the top of the Oak Hill system out back through a couple of private landowners property um, and then drop down that hill into the Miners Pond loop. Uh, so right now what we're doing is we're working with the town of Bellows Falls along with those two private landowners to get some agreements uh, with the hope of next year beginning the process of flagging out a trail, doing some corridor clearing, and eventually actually getting, you know, a, a tread built. Uh, it's a lot of work building trails, as I'm sure everyone else knows, and, you know, when you're all volunteer doing it by hand, uh, two miles will, will take us some time. And so we also always, you know, we welcome volunteers. We typically have kind of a, a kickoff in the spring um, to do some trail work. We try to do about once a month, some kind of, um, you know, half day trail work day on a Saturday or a Sunday, um, in addition to those group rides. All of that's posted on, um, we try to post it on our, our Facebook group. Uh, you can also, if you Google the Wyndham County Trails Alliance, you'll find our website and you can sign up to be on our mailing list. We're all right with social media and, you know, communicating. Sometimes we can definitely be better there. Uh, but we welcome folks, whether you're, you know, a longtime mountain biker, not a mountain biker at all, and you're a hiker, but you like using the trails and you want to help out, really, it's, um, yeah, we've kind of adopted those trails and are trying to build them out. So right now, the Oak Hill Trails, it's, that I think some of these other initiatives are for connecting different pieces of the town or other towns together, whereas we're kind of more focused on how do we take this small area of land and add a bunch of fun trails into it. So more like density versus connectivity there is um, our approach right now. Although that minor pond connection will give us a little bit more scope in terms of um, you know, how far you could hike or um, go just being on those trails. And I think I will leave it at that, but once we get to the question phase, I'm happy to answer questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Connor. Now for the connectivity piece, perhaps the most exciting possibility <laughs> is um, the, the Bylas Bridge after many, many, many years and much frustration has finally been budgeted by the state of New Hampshire for reconstruction repair 2028, maybe? Is that the date Scott made with it? Yeah. So um, once we get across the river, the connections are amazing, all the way down to Massachusetts and all throughout parts of New Hampshire. And Mike will describe that now.
What are you tr having trouble with? So I'm going to go into presentation mode. Oh, to be able to like see notes? To be in presentation mode and present it because I have animation built in. Oh, okay. You can't help me. Right? No, no, no. Um, mm -hmm. um, all right, I guess we'll do it like this. Okay, so you don't have to advance slide. Okay. So it's not exactly what I wanted to do, but it'll be good enough. Okay, so I'm Mike Kowalczyk. I'm from the Monadnock Region Rail Trail Collaborative. I'm on the other side of the river. And after I think Bonnie just spoke, I'm also from the other side of the tracks. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to briefly go over what we're doing on our side of the river, and I'll kind of focus a little bit on how we make the connection here. Okay, so advance. I, I can't use this. You'll have to just oh, hit the okay. right there. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay, so we're a group made up of representatives from around our region. We have people from different towns. We have uh, a person from Cheshire County, from uh, our Monadnock Conservancy, uh, Regional Planning Commission, various folks that sit on our board. And our goal is to rehabilitate and maintain. There's uh, four major trails in our region, and we want to get those to a a quality where the six-year-old can ride a bike on it and we want to connect to all our neighbors and you're one of them so bellows falls winchington and, and brattleboro next uh, this is the board so like i said cheshire county Keene, southwest regional planning commission and in a few towns are also on the board we are a 501c3 through the bike walk alliance in new hampshire and we're registered with the state of new hampshire next So these are all the trails that I'm talking about. Um, again, it would have been better if I could have ran animation, but I couldn't. So Cheshire, the Cheshire Trail, let's see if I can get this to work. Yeah, here we go. The Cheshire Trail runs pretty much from Winchington all the way up to Bellows Falls. That's 43 miles. The Ashwila Trail starts in Keene and goes down into South Hinsdale. That's 21 and three quarters. The Fort Hill runs along the Connecticut River up to Brattleboro. That's eight and a half. And then we're also just starting to work on this trail here, the Monadnock, uh, which is from the state line uh, near Winchington up to Peterborough, and then from Peterborough to Hill Hillsborough. It was called the Peterborough Hillsborough Rail Line. Uh, that's another section. And then these are the connections. So, you know, originally the Saxon River, I guess it's now the riverfront trail that we'd be connecting to here. Uh, but in Brattleboro, it's the West River. In Winchington, it's the North Central Pathway, and also the Rare River in Winchington, which, by the way, is 26 miles and connects to Mass Central, which goes to Boston. So people from Boston can get here on the bike, right? which I think would be great. Uh, also provide a bunch of amenities, uh, like this, you know, signage, hydration station, that kind of thing. Okay, next, please. Okay, so this is kind of some of our current status. So Keene recently did a, a rehab of some of about two miles of its trail uh, this past year. They also have a, a plan. If you're familiar with the Keene area at all, uh, when you're going to Marlboro, there's a big stone arch bridge. Okay, they're gonna put a bridge over 101 to connect that and a bridge over Swansea Factory Road, which then goes down into Swansea and heads down towards uh, down towards Winchington. Okay, so it'll connect the whole southern part of the county with the northern part of the county. Uh, so they're working on that, and phase one of that is to happen this year, which is clearing some trail from Eastern Ave to 101. Uh, Swansea has a TAP grant. Uh, that's what Gary was talking about to fix a bunch of trail in Swansea. We've also been using recreational trails program grants. I don't know if you have that in Vermont or not. 
uh, to do some like ditching and tree, tree clearing and that kind of thing. Uh, Manada Conservancy fixed 2.3 miles back in 21 down here in Lower Fitzwilliam. Uh, Troy is going to fix about a mile this spring. Um, let me see, we recently were starting to plan this whole section of trail down through here. And Winchester has been kind of killing it. They've been fixing bridges and fixing and putting in parking lots and fixing the pieces of the trail. So there's stuff kind of happening around the region. Okay, oh, and then, oh, before I go, the most important part. So up here in Westmoreland and Surrey, they've also got an RTP grant that'll be happening this year, and so does Walpole. So Walpole, you, if you get on the trails in Walpole, you're gonna start to see stuff happening in Walpole, okay? Now, like Gary said, all this takes years. So all these projects, oh, if you back up, okay. all these projects are kind of like the start, right? This is, this is this group getting started, this group getting started, but it'll probably take three, four years before it's done done. Okay, next. Okay, so uh, this is the connector. So this is the Cheshire Trail. You can't see the legend here, but coming from Walpole going north. This is actually North Walpole. Um, and then here's, I, I might have got this wrong, but the riverfront, maybe it doesn't go this far, but you know, the riverfront trail here in Bellis Falls. And then here's our, you know, the big connector, which is the Bellis Bridge. And that's mentioned is on the DOT 10 year plan. Um, and we need to make sure it's bike bed friendly, right? That there's bike planes on it and there's sidewalks on it. I, I did a brief exchange with Shelly Winter. She works for the DOT, telling her, hey, we're interested in this. I'm gonna be coming back, you know, that kind of thing. So we'll start getting involved there. And because we have the planning commission person on our board, he'll be helping. So we can start putting some effort into this. Uh, to making sure it's a link that we're all happy with. Okay, then how do we get from there to there, right? And so this section here, this orange part, is probably going to be along 12 because the tracks are on the other side of the road and it's still active. That's where the um, going to do maintenance and stuff in there, right? So we can't get on the actual rail bed. But there's a pretty wide shoulder there. I walked this a couple years ago. So there's two ideas right now. One is just put a, bank, a bike lane in, you know, along the shoulder. And the second one is put what I call road with trail. And that's actually a, a concrete barrier or something like that that separates the road from the trail. So people feel safe and that kind of thing. Of course, this is probably more money than that. But those are two possibilities. That gets you down to where the the rail bed comes out on the 12, which is right near Abishan's there and kind of in that area. So then what, right? So there's two options there too. You can continue down 12 and do a similar thing. And then you need a right of way connector like right around here around the Jiffy Mart. It's a short distance or finish the rail bed itself. The rail bed itself to finish is more complicated. This is pretty wooded, needs a lot of work, needs a lot of clearing. The rail bed is there but it would need a lot of work to get it uh, to a point that the six-year-old could ride the bike on it. And the Cold River Bridge is missing. So the abutments are there, but the bridge is gone. So somebody took the bridge at some time in the past. Uh, so you have to replace the bridge, right? So this is still being discussed on what to do. And Walpole's focus right now is to get everything kind of south of this, you know, fixed up. So we have time because like Gary said, this is gonna be a few years. But we'll start, you know, we're kind of working on it. But that's the idea of the connector, right? Okay, so next. Okay, so maintenance. Uh, green circles mean it's being maintained for year-round use. Yellow circle means it's being maintained for snowmobile use. And red circle means we don't know. We're trying to find out, right? So you can see we got quite a bit of green circles going. Uh, and it's usually a combination of a trail group, like Walpole has a trail group through their Conservation Commission that's doing work, and the Hooper Hill Hoppers, which is a snowmobile club. And then the, the snowmobile club also in Westmoreland said they now say, yeah, they'll start working on the trail year round. And there's a gap to kind of coordinate things through the summer months. Uh, and similar through, you know, uh, all the other different sections. So as you can see, you kind of need sections of, you know, groups managing sections of the trail. 
Uh, the Cheshire Trail uh, south of Swansea is pretty much the snow moles right now taking care of it. Uh, so it's mostly, you know, for winter use. And what that means is if you come into a section of trail that has a lot of vegetation, typically snowmobile clubs go out around late October, early November to start mowing and clearing and get ready for snowmobile season. So in July or August, you could be trying to walk through six feet of weeds, uh, potentially. So, um, and then they also manage this section of trail from the state line up to Jaffrey. And we're, like I said, we just started working on this, basically trying to understand who's doing what, if anything. Okay, next. Okay, so Gary had a big list of benefits. I boiled it down to three. Uh, one is economic activity and value. In fact, I doing another presentation for the state of New Hampshire, and I just learned in 2021, the bikers, hikers, and equestrian people contributed 48 million to New Hampshire's economy last year. So it's not chump change, right? It's something, right? So, hey, if we can get all these connections made, we can maybe be getting people to do bike rides from Boston up to here, right? Which would be helpful. Uh, it just helps with, you know, using bikes and pedestrian for transportation. Uh, I found a study, I think it was greenways.com, that said typically a person will bike five miles as, as a form of transportation, commute every day. <clears throat> With e-bikes, it's probably a little longer now, seven, maybe ten, you know, kind of thing. And then also just improves healthy because people are more active, you know, active people are more healthy. So, okay, next. So this was supposed to be kind of a fun puzzle, but anyway, we're put, putting all the pieces to the, of the puzzle together. We have our plans, we have our funding sources, we have pretty much every municipality in our region working with us. Uh, we have a couple right of way encroachment issues, but really just a couple because all the trail I'm showing here is owned by the state of Hampshire, right? So we really, that's the person that we deal with when it comes to the state. Uh, we've been able to uh, come up with matching funds so far. We work with the state, the Department of Transportation, the Bureau of Trails, uh, Federal Highway, we've got all them in the loop. We know about what costs to do work. We have teams, as I showed, in different regions, and we have maintenance plans as well. And that's it. Okay, that wraps up our presentations, and now we're moving into phase two, where Bonnie will be uh, moderating questions and discussion. Marsha and Marsha will be right down. I'm going to go away. Is that? I have a question. Oh. It's for Gary, so Gary, you can't run away. <laughs> so what's the plan on the tap ramp? The uh, say that again, sorry? The, the schedule on the tap ramp. Um, so I think we're meeting next week. We'll win the Regional Commission, selecting a consultant. Actually, Colin would be better to answer that. We'll, um... Yeah, so um, I mean, as of right now, there's two separate tap ramps for Rockingham. The one that's Do you ongoing... want to introduce yourself? I yeah, yes. Sorry. sorry. I, I, my name's Colin Brand. I um, do transportation planning for the Winter Regional Commission. Um, and I work with uh, Rockingham and Gary in particular on a whole bunch of different things about like that summit in, in Rockingham. Um, and so there's two tap ramps. There's one to scope improvements for the intersection of Atkinson Street and School Street. Um, where the meeting waters building was, and that is, is ongoing, and, and we're sort of in the process of selecting a consultant. The other one, which Gary discussed tonight for the Bellas Falls uh, Riverfront Trail, um, and, and I had worked with Gary to apply in December for that grant from B Train, and that will be announced whether or not it's funded probably sometime in February. So we will know in, in, in February what the next steps are for, for that grant. Okay, great. Thank you. Let's go on. Other questions? Carol. Um, I'm not sure if it's a question or just my pie in the sky was I would love to see the trails from like Manana continue up the Connecticut Valley to connect to the eastern ends of the Cross Vermont and the Lamoille trails. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's, a, that's a great pie in the sky. <laughs> that's a lot of pie. <laughs> that's a question for 
Or it's not a question. But well, I don't know what the trail to... system is in Vermont going up to there. I can tell you there's a cross New Hampshire trail from Maine through New, through New Hampshire to connect with the Lamoilles. And there's a person working on that to make that connection. So I think the Lamoilles like 92 miles. Across the hinge is another, I think, 60 or something, and then they're connecting with a trail in Maine. So people will be able to go pretty far along the northern part of Maine. But I'm not familiar with how to get from here up to there on the side of the river. And I'm not specifically saying on either side, but just yeah. to be able to, you know, then you could really get like a whole regional connection. Yeah, yeah, that would be great. Um, you know, because from the Lamoille one, it's not that hard even to get up toward Montreal, and you know, they've well, got a lot yeah, of that's, that's on trails Berlin. up in Quebec. I think and that's on the Burlington, right? It, it goes not quite, but the Swanton, I think. Oh, okay, the Missisquoi yeah. goes. Oh, no, that's St. Albans, it starts in St. Albans, and like, yeah, yep, yeah. Okay. And the other east side of the state, Lamoille is east. Oh, right, yeah, uh. More questions? I have a comment that one part, one aspect I haven't heard mentioned is um, communicating with the community. I bring it up because so many times somebody will say, what are we doing? Oh, it's riding at Oak Ridge Trails. Where's that? Because people aren't aware of it. And it, a lot of times they're in their own backyard, not aware of what's available. Um, maybe this one time not aware, but how to how to get to the public that hey this is here come use it uh it seems to be a missing link yeah yeah i would agree with that yep. it'd be great to have something maybe even on the town website that had lists all of us and we keep talking about doing it on our website we haven't done it <clears throat> but uh both yeah great thanks al Jean. Hi, I'm Jean, and in my younger days, I used to be a sort of moderately intense uh, medium long distance biker. <laughs> and I just hope that um, when you're applying for all these grants, that you accentuate the economic value. I hung out with some bikers who spent thousands of dollars on exotic bike trips. There's a lot of money and people you know so if we had a connecting trail system people would come to those falls and they eat, eat and they want to stay at an inn and they don't want to, yeah they spend a lot of money yeah right. i would say it's your comment i've been doing some volunteer work at the riverfront park people have been coming because of COVID and so many more families do things they never did before together. They got into kayaking, they got into hiking, they got into fishing, and I saw such an intense change after COVID. So I think, I definitely agree with her, this is a huge economic benefit. And the, I think the number was 48 million mm -hmm. was mentioned in New Hampshire that it generated. I see even more. Um, I just think it would just be a marvelous, marvelous thing for us economically and we should all support it. Absolutely. Okay. Um, I think one thing that nobody's talked about is the environmental impact of having more people walk and bike and doing commerce between the different villages too within the town of Rockingham. Um, and I mean, my personal desire is to have 121 safe to ride a bike on. Yes. <laughs> I'm Jeff Newton. I work with Colin at the Windham Regional Commission, you know, with the mapping data collection. Um, so a few comments, a couple things that we might be able to help with is we have a pretty robust uh, bike and pet count program. So we have um, Tube counters we can put across the road that can do just like just like traffic counters can count bikes. So possibly you know put bike counters out there. How many people are biking on Route 121 now? If improvements were made, how many people are biking after those improvements are made? Um, trail counters, whether they're whether they're trail counts, crosswalk counters, things like that. So something that we might be able to help with. Uh, we've done a number of counts for different organizations who are doing grants. So um, happy to help out. 
with that. Um, Gentlemen, I mentioned about um, just knowing that the trails are available. Um, I hear that all the time. I live down in Brattleboro, and there's this great trail, but you kind of got to go past the posted sign, which is okay, just ignore that. <laughs> <laughs> this guy was really sketchy. He was on the trail you walk past. His house was super nice. <laughs> and um, so there's 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 a lot of trails that we could use some love in terms of signage and wayfinding and really making people feel welcome. Mm -hmm. um, and so many of you may know where these trails are informally, but if you're a little nervous about maybe, you know, going on some private property or you're not sure if this is the right place or not, or the brambles or, mm -hmm. you know, littered with ticks and you're a little wigged out about that, um, making these trails welcome through, welcoming just through better signage and kiosks and things like that are really important and it's something that's actually relatively inexpensive to do um you know gary was talking about these grants lots of money to build these trails that's that's great but in some places where the trails were already built it's relatively easy to do some good signage and, and um good markings and things like that that, that can be helpful um anywhere else and again something we can help with some mapping too we've done a lot of trail maps for different organizations around here there's a, a website called trail finder that the state of vermont is using as their sort of um portal into official trails and so you can put some of your trails on there that helps i think um kind group has their mountain bike trails on um, trail forks um that's something the mountain bikers on there because that's that's really what we good to know about um I think that's all I have. Thank you. That's, that's great. That's really oh, um, sorry, one more. Um, you talked a lot about trails, but haven't heard anybody talk about sidewalks. Yeah. And I don't know if that's something that's part of your your view or not, because as you move through town, as you get from the rec center over to the Vilas Bridge of the Riverfront Park, yeah. um, looking at those sidewalks. Yeah, that is a big part of the Walk by Committee. We're working on, already working on some um, sidewalk issues in town and then out from there so uh, yeah I mean, that, and i think that's like the yeah well that's we have some other topics after all the questions we're gonna we have some topics to generate discussion so thanks hey um just seconding we have to go because it's getting late in the school night but i wanted to add Asked some of our friends, uh, youth in the community, about this, and I kind of said, Do um, you have any ideas about how the town can make it be better for bikers or walkers? Mm -hmm. The general consensus pretty much 99% of the kids are saying that the sidewalks are too broken, <laughs> uh, which it sounds like there's already a committee. And so it, I'm thinking of ideas, and like we would definitely be willing to like. Um, do some interviews with the kids and get some testimonials about that. Mm -hmm. um, and then also there's the idea that um, biking on the road is scary. Uh, and so, you know, so many of the kids are using bikes. Thanks to Bonnie, who provides uh, you know, low-cost bikes, which is incredible. Uh, <laughs> young adults and adults with intellectual disabilities who can't drive like biking is really really important for them to be able to access our community and be like positive members of the community um and it scares me a lot <laughs> for them even just like get to the health center um, i also think a lot about this idea of like connecting saxon's river and i know tons of um folks uh friends of mine in recovery who are trying to access recovery services via the bus Mm -hmm. and they live in Saxon's River and so then no bus goes out there so they're like hitching rides or walking on 121 and so to have a safe way would be incredible mm -hmm. so anyway just adding that and we'd love to add testimonials absolutely mm -hmm. absolutely great and we have to go thanks, thanks, sorry. thanks for coming yeah. <laughs> Betsy. Um, so Betsy Thurston with the Boss Hall downtown about Little Alliance and so glad I get to talk to you after this <laughs> meeting. Um, but I wanted to address something you said too that um, we are definitely working on. This is our little committee for Walkable Rockingham along with Gary. Um, and 
I'm not sure if you know, but we're in a lot of other groups, elected more than um, promotions and development. Obviously, the area is very busy, so we haven't gotten very far with this. But our idea is a wayfinding program. So um, to connect, there'll be kiosks and signage and QR codes, but they will connect the points of interest with different sites, historic sites, as well as trails. So that's our long-term goal of that. And it will be walking and walking now. It's a combination of both uh, signage and digital resources that are designed to interface. <coughs> And a BDCC uh, donated a consultant to help drive it because all of the people in walking, Walkable Rockingham are doing um, uh, other things. So to keep the continuity, um, we have someone working on it that's meeting with the walk bike or, or attending the walk bike committee's January 20th meeting to get started with that um, their group. So <clears throat> get it started. I have another question. I mean, the trends and you know the state is so car centric. You know, if groups like us can really lobby them to give us more money, you know, would that be helpful? Or um, I think, well, I'm, I'm not my answer, but I uh, part of it is um, not so much getting. I mean, yeah, money from DTrans, but also getting ahead. Part of our purpose is to stay ahead of the projects to make sure, on top of and ahead of the projects to make sure they include yeah. um, bike pit infrastructure and, and repairs or new projects. So, so another maybe, point of information, I started following VPOC 802 which is a movement to make sure that buildings and roads and infrastructure is built for people rather than for cars. Yes. And I mean, they, they recently fought in Burlington for um, an ordinance that prevents the minimum parking space associated with new buildings. So if you think of a European town with narrow corridors, which are walk and bike friendly, but not car friendly, that's one of the images that they use. Thank you. I, I just have one quick comment, another one I just thought of. While I was at the park, every single day, at least two or three people on birders from the Audubon Society and all over like New England, they come here, they stay a couple of days, they're asking me, where can I stay? What's a good restaurant in town? And they're here for a few days. And it's really amazing on the economic part of this, really amazing. So I'm thinking of all of this potential for us that was just mm -hmm. Yeah? Great. Any more questions? Mm -hmm. Mike? Yeah, comment. So you know, I spend time on the trails in my region doing maintenance, and because we have maintenance stuff on people stop and talk, and I've been noticing a lot of people on e-bikes. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, I would ask people, they stop and I'd say, oh, so how do you like your bike? Oh, I love it. Um, you know, how, how, how many miles have you gone? And I think it was in April, some, this one woman said she's done a thousand miles. I go, a thousand miles this year already? She says, yes. I go, how many miles did you ride before this? She goes, I never rode a bike. <laughs> <laughs> so the e-bikes are coming. Uh, New Hampshire's laws right now are class one and two on trails. So my question is, what's Vermont's laws around e-bikes and trails? Yeah, we, but I don't. Yeah, but it's, what does class one and two on trails mean? It's kind of Could you, the speed that they can go. Kind right, of like so. Like how they're powered. So, so class one is a uh, is an e-bike that is pedal assist only, no throttle. It can go up to 20 miles an hour. And class two is a pedal assist and throttle that can go 20. And class three can go up to 28. Which is not allowed on trails in in New Hampshire, right? So, and then the other issue we're dealing with uh, is there's lots of other products coming out that claim to be bikes, but they'll go 40, 50. They have a pedal, so they're calling them bikes. And for, so we're already talking to our legislation, saying we got to get some more classification on here because. They're really motorcycles. With but anyway, so all I'm saying is e-bikes, I think, are going to be a big thing. And so you might want to just start finding out what's the state allow or not allow. I think mass 
does not allow them at all because there's a motor on it, because their trails are non-motorized, period. Could we ask Jonathan Weber that question? Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's there. Can folks hear me? Yes. Okay, yeah, so uh, the word trails can be a bit of a hang up there, right? So if you're talking about a natural surface, like a single track trail or, you know, like a, a recreation, you know, like a rec path or a shared use path, um, Vermont law doesn't say anything about uh, e-bikes on natural surface trails. That's really something that landowners and trail managers are dictating right now. Um, and there are no restrictions on, um, on e-bikes on, you know, a uh, paved trail, um, as long as the bike falls within one of the, uh, three or technically four classes of e-bikes in state law. Um, and that basically means that the bike can't go faster than, uh, 28 or have more than a thousand Watts of power. Um, anything above that, uh, is not classified as an e-bike and it's basically a motor vehicle and not allowed on a trail. Thank you. Thanks, Jonathan. Thanks, Jonathan. Um, I just want to in, inject, inject <laughs> that um, just in talking about the, the growth of, of e-bikes and bikes in general, we have seen in the past few years at the bike shop a huge increase in people looking for bikes. So that means just more, more people, more bikers on the road. And so just another, um, you know, reason to get this get this infrastructure going. So. Okay, I have one more question. Um, is there, are there any statistics on accidents with bikes, how that has changed as more people are using them in the state or in the area? You, you can access that through the trans They actually have the, a list of all reported accidents. And when I looked, there had been something like one bicycle accident in the last 15 years in Bellows Fall. Wow. So, yeah. And um, Bob Schofield um, asked a question oh. um, here. It says, let's see, where can I get more information on the project and current trail system? Um, which project? I don't know which project. Projected and current? I'm oh. guessing projected and current. Oh, projected and current, so yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. oh projected and oh, okay. current. For trail system? Well, someone mentioned the trail finder on the state offers, right? Oh, isn't that one? Yeah. I think Jeff mentioned um, yep. Rails to Trails. Did they start trailfinder.com? I think that's uh, trail link. Trail, trail link, yeah. Trail link. Okay. But I don't believe a lot of your trails in town are, are in that. And so if somebody wants to go like type in, in Google, you know, Trails, Bellows Falls, Maybe they're going to get somebody who's posted a blog post about their blog, but there's no sort of one central official source for that information. So that could be something the town wants to think about, maybe doing a brochure, um, getting the trails into, into trail finder, things like that. If you do that, though, it's important to like go to Vermont Academy and say, hey, the public has used your trails informally. Um, what do you think about opening up? To the wider audience, and so there, so there can be issues that way too. So um, something to think about how how open to the public you you do want these trails. So yeah. So I, I would just oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. Well, some of the information was just here. So if that person can get a copy of what was what was projected here about the Bill of Falls trail, that might be. So, so that's what I wanted to say. We have <coughs> maps of the um, the first round of trails that Peter Bergstrom showed that that Jeff made for us for grants. Um, that's useful, and we do have a, a grant that's in process to turn those into brochures and maps by um, uh, December. Um, so those pieces are happening, but uh, we haven't thought about including VA and um, uh, getting permission from different places that's a good that's a good idea <clears throat> should probably work with you on getting those brochures developed and make sure we do that right and can uh, interface them with the internet programs oh, um, just, I got a copy of Peter's um, presentation is, is that, that available question? to everybody somewhere um, it, it doesn't have 
<laughs> it doesn't have a lot of details in it. I had a more detailed version, but it was too long. Oh. Well, this is being recorded, so I think it's going to be shown on, on the <clears throat> TV. Mm -hmm. Eventually. Oh, good. I, I, Personally, I think the town website would be the ideal place to have oh, a section yeah. on recreation. <laughs> I don't, think, I don't, don't think, get me started. <laughs> I think it might be ideal, but that's not where I would go for information. The town website is, I mean, if I were thinking, right. where am I going to go? I don't think that's where, I think there must be other ways, whether it's a Facebook page or something else, because the town well, website is not, well, it's could not be on, the first place. the town website, so as yeah. long as there was a, um, you're able to leverage the Google search engine to find to point you to that. <laughs> so we'll we'll have that on the town website um, uh, for the end of the week under under the community projects tab. Just the just the map of the trails that Peter said was the downtown Bellas Falls ones. So yeah. Oak Hill trails. Um, Bald Hill Trails, the Riverfront Trail, <coughs> and Miners Pond that are on it. Great. And the, and the pump track area, the wreck, wreck area. <coughs> Just another um, comment I've heard that some trails groups that like their vision stops at the town line. Um, but somebody who's going to come to Bellows Falls and you know go buy a cup of coffee or a beer before or after their, their hike may do their walk in the Bellows Falls High School Forest, which is in Westminster, Oregon. Wonderful views of the town from um, Table Rock. And so while they're not in your town, you may want to look at you know working with say groups in Wellpool to better signage and, and improvements yeah. to that trail too. That can be a great resource um, to, to the town here. So. Yeah. True. Absolutely. Oh. There was a mention earlier that she made a comment on uh, um, comments that she had gotten from kids and they mentioned it is scary to ride a bike on the road. Well it is. Yeah. Uh, I I ride a lot, six to nine thousand miles a year or so and it's it is scary. And most of what makes it scary is ignorance on the part of car drivers and bike riders that there's this massive gap of understanding that we're all there for the same thing and that we all have the same rules, that the, the car drivers don't understand that the bicycles have a right to be there, the bicycle riders don't have an understanding that they have to follow the same rules as the cars. It's, it's like there's an education gap going on there. There's a little bit in your driver's license manual when you're 16 years old and you read it about how we all fit together. <laughs> uh, that's, all I, that's all I know of as far as ed educating the public of how this all works. Um, and I would think that if what, there was a massive statewide education program that would you know, work for both uh, pedestrian type users and car drivers, uh, we could kind of now the divide a little bit, but it's it's I turn I know so and I can't fault one group or the other because we both do and a lot of the bike people don't understand that there's rules to be followed and this is how you should go about it and uh, a lot of the car people don't understand that you know it's the roads are for people. Thing. So I just I just throw it out there. I don't I have a solution. I just point the problems, <laughs> but, but it's, it seems to be an education problem. Whether it's part of the driver education thing, or um, if there should be some form of bike education, I, I don't know. But it, there's definitely a that's a why it starts there. with the kids. Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, Good point. Incidentally, I just want to put this out uh, that we are finally resuming our um, bike riding, safe riding, and and repair classes with the middle school this spring, um, but I don't have a teacher yet. So, anyone? Oh, fine, Mike. Thanks for coming. Take care. Yep. Bye bye. We'll, just, we'll keep in touch. Yeah. Thanks, Mike. Um, so, that's all. I'm not going to elaborate, but just contact me if you or anyone we you know uh, is interested in working with middle school kids riding and or parent. So, I think we're going to wrap up soon. Oh, we do. Yeah. It's almost Whenever you're ready. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. Um, Burlington, Vermont is a major biking town and uh, nowadays as opposed to 10 years ago there are signs all over share the road and there's a picture of a bicycle and you've got to have the sign that just quite kind of speak to your 
Right. You know, and there's marked bike lanes, mm -hmm. and it's really in your face about where the bikes should be and where the cars should be, and there's all kinds of signage. Otherwise, yeah, mm -hmm. um, you know, accidents happen. Yeah, mm -hmm. we're, we're working on that. We'll be we'll working yeah. on that. One sign that we talked about having, say, on 121, at least until we can get something off the road, is. Um, uh, bikers may use travel lane, like so yes. up ahead. So that that would be um, something that could be. Um, yes. And while we're being realistic about uh, 121, uh, I might point out that several years ago I attended a meeting sort of like this to discuss putting a sidewalk out through Northwest Minster, mm -hmm. um, which, by the way, would have been the very first sidewalk in the entire town of Westminster. <laughs> <laughs> um, the ultimate conclusion that the state reached, there was a small grant to, to study building such a, 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 a thing, uh, and the ultimate conclusion was that the, uh, the road and the right of way out through that village didn't really accommodate, wouldn't really accommodate a sidewalk. So I wouldn't be too optimistic about having a sidewalk along there in the meantime. Yes, we need to work more on sharing the right of way that there is. Uh, on, along a stretch of road that is used by bicycles, pedestrians, motor vehicles, trucks, etc. That's rather narrow. Yeah. Yeah, I just want to say there's a sign up sheet on here. If, if you haven't, it's not on the table. Um, contact or email. If you uh, keep you in the loop with progress or maps or whatever. And I don't know if there's a way to capture it from the um, Zoom uh, participants. The um, chat. Oh. Yeah, if they could put, put emails yeah, in the chat and you could that. screenshot them. Sure. Yeah, anyone who wants to share and chat, go for it. So you can put it in the um, Just want to make sure we covered all the topics. <laughs> to hear all the ideas that you've been presenting and I would say 90% of them are things that we have talked about in our committee. We've only been meeting for nine months, eight, nine months, so you don't see a whole lot of change yet, but um, this meeting is, this is our coming out. <laughs> yeah, good job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before we adjourn, I want to thank um, uh, Anne for all her tremendous support, the Director of Programming here at the library, and she yeah. has done a fabulous job of supporting us and promoting the program. Oh, so thank you for the audience. Thank you. So, and also thanks to Alex Stradley and Fat TV for yeah. uh, recording the broadcast. So um, now we can have informal conversation for go home.